Well, thank you, Mr. President. Many of us will leave this chamber today to prepare for Halloween festivities in our neighborhoods and communities. We'll help our kids dress up in their costumes, pass out candy, and some of us may even muster up the courage to visit a haunted house. Well, the treats will be plentiful tonight, unfortunately, Mr. President, the people of Michigan appear to be the ones who have been tricked. Last November, we were all sent here to do a job, and the message from Michigan voters were clear. Work together to move Michigan forward. Unfortunately, the very slim Democrat majorities have taken a tremendous opportunity to truly, to truly govern in sensible middle and squandered its, it away choosing to march lockstep with a governor more concerned about pursuing national ambitions, failed left-wing ideology that their base loves. That was made clear from the beginning, as the first bill, the very first bill that jammed through this legislative chamber back in January and passed along partisan party lines was an order from the Biden White House to move up the presidential primary. And it's the reason the majority will likely be ending session historically early next week. So it can go into effect. It all could have been avoided. There was a sensible ground for compromise, but Democrats decided to follow the orders of the Democrat National Committee, disenfranchising the voting rights of millions of Michiganders and starting their holiday break early. But this spooky story doesn't end there, Mr. President. Over the next several months, Democrats did what Democrats always do when they have power. They gave back to their special interests. They gave back to their union bosses, the trial lawyers, and those determined to turn our society into a cultural progressive dystopia. We watched as Governor Whitmer and the Democrats concocted a scheme to try to take away a permanent income tax cut from Michigan families. When Republicans stopped them, they employed the Attorney General next to do their bidding with a plan that will raise income taxes next year by $800 million. And their ghastly motives became quite clear as the governor and her majorities decided that instead of Michigan families keeping their tax dollars, that their money would be better off in the hands of profitable multinational corporations. And even those closely aligned with the Chinese Communist Party. Democrats continued their destructive policies as they made Michigan the first right-to-work state in 65 years to repeal the law that protected the rights of all workers, whether they choose to join a union or not to join a union. They reinstituted and inflated wages on government construction projects, making new schools and road projects more expensive to build, all to benefit their big union boss backers. Then they proposed a billion and a half dollar tax increase on small businesses, nonprofits, and Michigan workers collected and managed by a UAIA style bureaucracy ripe for fraud and abuse. Mr. President, with Governor Whitmer and the Lansing Democrats showing how unserious they are about building our economy, I fear the ghost of the Grand Home Administration has returned to bring us another lost decade. What could be more haunting? And finally, who could forget the monstrosity that was adopted on a purely partisan vote just last week? Here in the Senate, an energy proposal that put far-left environmentalists ahead of Michigan workers, which will increase energy rates of struggling Michigan families, will make an energy less reliable here in the state of Michigan. Yes, Mr. President, like the short-sighted intentions of Dr. Frankenstein, the unintended consequences of the majority's poorly constructed science experiment will only lead to failure and hardship here in Michigan. What happens when the middle class blue collar workers get fired because of these Green New Deal policies? Don't worry, don't worry. Governor Whitmer will just create another bloated bureaucracy to help you find a new job working on electric vehicles they're going to force everyone to buy. And so as Lansing Democrats took, looked to scurry out of town earlier this year, it is truly frightening to think what has transpired in this chamber the past 10 months? But nothing is more chilling than the devastating effects the majority's decisions will have on Michigan families, farmers, seniors, and small business owners for the coming years ahead. There could be no mistake who is responsible for the economic fallout that is inevitably yet to come. Lansing Democrats choose to go it alone, and the people of Michigan who elected us to work together will remember that.